Shalom, giving all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachahakwarash. Double honors to the apostles, the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations as always to the elect. Another episode going into news and prophecy, linking the things happening worldwide to the Holy Scriptures via biblical prophecy to show the faithful elect. All right, uh, that the words of Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh are faithful and true. All right, those of you who are dancing to the tune of the new song, which is being sung, all right, uh, through Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh via the prophets on earth who have been endowed with the Holy Spirit in these latter days, all right, to condemn, all right, uh, this uh, current power structure ran by the biblical Edomites, all right, which uh, in the Holy Scriptures is known as the beast system headed by. Babylon the Great, as well as NATO in the EU, as well as the different nations joined unto them, all right, uh, also to condemn two-thirds of our own people, all right, and the heathen nations um, that aren't Israelites, okay, um, and to call our people to repentance, which is described in Revelation, the 14th chapter, in the new song, which would be sung by the 144,000, which some of those men, all right, are alive and on the earth today, preaching, prophesying, and doing exactly what the scriptures say, and warning about the MOTB, which is the Haragma, Mark of the Beast, all right, which uh, the heathen nations are preparing to issue forth. Um, war is being prepared. There's a lot happening, and the heathen are showing themselves to be the devil, all right, in particular, these Edomites are showing themselves to be the devil um, that the Bible speaks of, okay? And uh, we're just going to get into a few things. Um, uh, as you can see here, um, <laughs> articles um, basically um, with this guy, Biden, um, who we told you, you know, when he gets into office, you know, everything would go completely left. All right. Things were already left in Babylon a great. All right. But they're even more left um, with this uh, wicked <laughs> regime that has taken uh, office. OK, everything is um, pretty much boasting itself against Yahweh Bashim Shai in a major way. And ultimately, he's a puppet. All right. That's put in place to bring in. OK. Uh, all out tyranny okay and this particular system that we've been warning you about okay the groundworks are in place the legislation is in place all they need all right are the false flags okay and uh ultimately justification to come down with the hammer and the sword all right which we've been warning of okay but as you can see all right those of our people who uh, yielded to the devil's instructions, all right, to uh, juice up, all right, are looking like damn fools, all right, as even, uh show you this, I'm not going to read too much about it because this could be a snare as well. Um, but even Google and YouTube are changing their rules and will no longer ban statements, all right, on... Uh, the face diapers and the juice, all right, and how efficient it is because there's so much information coming out that it was a failure, okay? And, um, <laughs> you know, we're not going to read too much into it, but this is a tweet. YouTube has removed the rule bearing claims that juice ain't what it is, okay? So, Pretty much the narrative surrounding that juice, it's failed and they've, you know, but but through it all, they got what they wanted. All right. As there are a lot of people who yielded to that, even a lot of you Israelites yielded to that. All right. Through the uh, guidance of your teachers. OK, but after all of that, which it was sort of like a, a drive by shooting, the devil just says, I'm sorry, it's over. I didn't mean that. You see, but now you have all of these people who are divided. You have people who don't know what the hell 
all right, <laughs> is uh, inside of them, okay, roaming free, you know, a lot, or just dropping dead, okay, which is a, a big part of the plan. But uh, th th then the devil just tells you, uh, you know what, we, we y'all were right, okay, uh, my bad, and it's just over after all of that, all right, which shows you that trusting in Yahweh Bashim Shai is the right thing to do. Now, during it all, you know, a few brothers and sisters had scares, all right, but the Lord showed you something that you should take heed of, okay, even you who may have uh, lost particular jobs, okay, but you're all right, okay, because it was ultimately uh, the devil, all right, the Heavenly Father giving the devil permission to, you know, put pressure on the people, all right, and the pressure is going to only get harder, it's only going to get, you know, the squeeze is only going to get tighter, but that was just a, a little test run, okay, and they got the opinions of the people, they're watching all of these social media accounts, uh, they got people divided, you know, and ultimately, um, they're getting ready to come with a whole nother plan surrounding, you know, climate change, all right, and, 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 and many more things, which we'll get into um, with this devil Biden is signing into office, and he's only doing the bidding of the elite. But again, this this showed you that trusting in the Lord is far better than leaning on the devil. This devil means no good to you Israelites. Okay, the scriptures tells you, or as you can see the title of those those videos, okay, although, you know, the particular uh, others are saying, you know, these people, all right, the the S C I E entist <laughs> are saying nah. Okay, but but you know they're pushing all right this confusion out there because that's what this is. This is a stronghold of confusion. It's the Tower of Babel. Okay, and through that confusion, ultimately they they're subverting the souls of men and women. All right, and when it's all said and done, all right, all hell is going to break loose from these opposing sides. And that's what they want. Civil unrest is on the rise and many, many more things. But I want to start with a scripture here. As a matter of fact, we'll start here, okay, because um, you have particular people uh, who are opposed to the Holy Scriptures who say it was the so-called white man who wrote it, which when you go into the Bible, it goes against everything he stands for. Okay, how how in the hell could a so-called white man write a book that tells you uh, a man not to lay with a man or a woman not to d deal with a woman? Okay, or women shouldn't go into the, the, the war, into the military. Okay, and many more things that we see being transgressed that you shouldn't mingle seeds. This devil has set up a system that is 100% opposed to to these holy scriptures so how could this book be written by him it goes against his whole spirit okay and within the scriptures okay it tells you and it gives you the game on how to separate from him in his own system though we're under the curses and still have to we're pretty much in the belly of the beast the scriptures give you a, a mindset all right in a in a in a set of precepts which are commandments because when people think of the commandments they only think of the 613 all right well within the 613 commandments there's some all right that you can't play out here in babylon the great so what does that mean you have to go to the precepts you got to learn how to operate in the spirit okay which is what our people are lacking okay our problem all right is beyond money our problem is beyond okay uh, uh earthly things our problem is our our people ain't in line in the spirit with the most high through his son. Okay, and all of these various different philosophies has left them out to dry. Okay, here it is, the people who are against the Holy Scriptures, okay, who were talking all of this crap against the Bible, the, the conscious community is example. Okay, they told you to go out and juice up. Okay, that's what they were promoting to you. All right, all right, and they're going to tell you to haragma up. They're going to tell you to get that chip. Okay, so the, 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 the holy scriptures, all right, have the supreme wisdom, knowledge, and understanding needed, okay, to get, all right, the salvation. This is Sirach 
chapter 12 and 10, it says, never trust thine enemy. For like as iron rusted, so is his wickedness. All right. This is the devil. We're not saying that just to be cute. OK, a lot of us, when we started out. All right. We were mimicking the apostles and just saying, well, you know, this is the, they're the devil, they're the devil. But as we've grown and matured in the Holy Spirit, we see it. And devil only means deceiver. Satan means adversary. OK, and look at the world around you. OK, <laughs> And I'm going to get a quote, all right, from uh, this beloved brother. Let's see here. The beloved uh, brother, Ayasha Math, you know, a quote from this video um, that is very true, okay? Because if you're not crying against this devil and crying to the Lord to, to stop this guy, all right, then you're not in the truth. All right, this is uh, Sirach chapter 12 and 10. Never trust thine enemy, for like as iron rusted, so is his wickedness. Though he humble himself and go crouching, and that's what he did, and that's what he's doing with everything he's presenting to you, he's coming as if he really means well, okay? And, uh, you know, brothers were talking about this movie uh, Implant, all right, and y'all should check that out. Came out in uh, 2021. All right, but, <laughs> you know, here it is. You, you're trusting the devil, and what it leads to is all out hell. Okay, and them ultimately uh, becoming, all right, your God. All right, but it's all going to be under the guise of uh, uh, enhancing you and making your life better. See? And everything is in a... A decrepit state you know everybody's arguing why is that because what the righteous are not in authority the scriptures tell you let's get the book of uh proverbs 29 real quick proverbs it's like you try to you know smile and have a have fun but you know you're always back to the reality of the fact that this is hell and that this is a very wicked place, man. And what's happening to children, what's happening to the atmosphere, what they're planning on doing. All right. That's no laughing matter, man. How could you smile and, and have fun knowing that that's what this devil was doing? Now, we, we, we do have fun amongst each other. We joy in the Holy Spirit. We rejoice in prophecy. All right. But as the scriptures say, let's get that. <laughs> we'll get that in the book of Proverbs real quick. Get it here. Even in laughter. <laughs> Was that, uh, I believe that's Proverbs 14, Proverbs, the 14th chapter in the uh, 13 verse, it says, even in laughter, the heart is sorrowful and at the end of that mirth is heaviness. All right. Even in laughter, the heart is sorrowful and at the end of that mirth is heaviness. Okay. So mirth has its place. There's a time for mirth, but we're, we're in a time of sorrow, man. We're in a time of mourning unto our power to deliver us out of this hellhole. It's starting to take a toll on brothers, sisters as well. This this is complete hell, man. Okay? And it's good that we went through this, as the scriptures say. Um, it is good that I have been afflicted. Let's get this real quick. All right, so we can learn our lesson. And, you know, as the best coaches are, hard coaches and the best teachers are hard teachers. Hey, the most high <laughs> through his only begotten son. Hey, look what he did to his only begotten son. Look what he had him to go through. He's a hard teacher. And when it's all said and done, that way you appreciate it more. But this is the book of Psalms 119. All right. And 71, it says, it is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn thy statutes. So we went through this hell so that we can appreciate, all right, the statues, the, the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahusha, the laws, his way, which isn't being uplifted in the planet Earth. Okay, it is good. All right. Uh, and what, what, what are we here ultimately to learn as the sons of the Most High, which when you deal with the sons of God, that trickles on down to the daughters as well. Mankind starts with what? Man and woman. 
Okay, so this is Psalms 119 and 75. I know, O Yahweh, that thy judgments are right, that thou faithful in, in thou faithfulness. All right, let's read this again. I know, O Yahweh, that thy judgments are right, and that thou faithfulness has afflicted me. Okay, that in faithfulness thou has afflicted me. Okay, so this this, this is all happening for a reason. All right, but the, the beauty of it is via this grace period, the elect remnant are going to acknowledge their offense. Okay, now let's go back here to Proverbs 29 and 2. It says, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice, but when the wicked bear rule, the people mourn. Okay, and people are faking it as if they're having fun. All right, and when they're even have, trying to have fun, they're not even having fun. They're recording it. All right, they want to put on social media the uh, the uh, visage of having fun, but really, the, all, everybody's miserable. And why is that? Ultimately, because the ways of righteousness are not implemented in the earth. All right, men and women are just arguing back and forth. Okay, the, uh, people in their sixties are getting divorced. Everybody's divorcing. Okay, children are uh, complete monsters. All of this is a result of wicked rulership, a bad coach. See? And the Heavenly Father is getting ready to, to, to fix this. this. We're in the beginning stages, all right, of the transfer of kingdoms, okay? And what, what the mindset that we're supposed to have is what? All right, Sirach chapter 12 and 10. Never trust thine enemy. You see that? Never. For like as iron rusted, so is his wickedness. All right. Though he humble himself and go crouching, yet take good heed and beware of him. All right. And thou shalt be unto him as if thou hast wiped a looking glass. There's always you, you're still looking for particular streaks. OK. You, you got to watch this man. All right. And thou shalt know that his rust have not been altogether wiped away. OK, set him not by thee. All right. And what you, when you went and juiced up, you were setting him by you. All right. When you allowed. All right. Uh, the, these devils. All right. And your puppet leaders to, to get in front of you and tell you to go ahead and do that. OK. And that the Heavenly Father didn't mind and you be stupid like General Johanna told you, like IUIC told you. Now, IUIC, I will say, did retract. All right, but how many people initially heard them say, go do it, and went and did it, and got affected? Well, it, it came out that uh, 20 to uh, 30 members of their school passed away. Now, what's, what would have just so happened that they, they, they passed away due to them getting that? And when we're talking about that, we're talking about the serpent sauce, the curl activator. OK, the Biden taco sauce. All right. Which you you had no business laying around there with that serpent like that. After everything he's done, we get to 2022 or 2020 or whatever the hell. And, and, and you trust him. See. Though he humble himself, we're not supposed to trust him. OK. But you know what a nigga will say? Well, you, you go get chicken from the store. You don't know what's in that. And, and and ultimately all everything's defiled, all right, but that's different, man. You you totally just tell told the Lord, I don't I don't give a damn. I'm not waiting on you. And the Lord came through for brothers and sisters who who leaned on him. How much more as the tests get even harder? Okay? And if that juice was doing that to people, what it's doing and, and all of the stuff, imagine <laughs> That haragma. Now go watch that movie and plant it. All right. It says, set him not by thee, lest when he have overthrown thee, he stand up in thy place. Neither let him sit at thy right hand. That means you trust him. OK, your right hand man is someone who you counsel with. You tell your secrets to you. You, you, you trust them. OK. Lest he seek to take thy seat. And that's what he wants. He wants to take your seat. OK, that's why there's a lot going on over there in uh, uh, Jerusalem, <laughs> in Israel. Right. 
There's a lot going on over there because they ultimately are trying to establish themselves in the stead of the chosen, but through left-hand means. And when we say left-hand, witchcraft, all right, you have the right hand, all right, which is through Yahweh Shai. You have the left hand, which is through Satan, okay? And it says, and thou at the last remember my words and be pricked. See, be pricked therewith. Be pricked. Let's look at this word, pricked. See that? Let's just look it up. Be pricked thereof. <laughs> you see? And a lot of people are waking up and saying, damn, I shouldn't have did that. I, I, I was stupid to do that. Okay? Let's see here. Simple pricked. Simple past tense of the of prick. Okay, let's look up this term prick. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you, you <laughs> that's what it's gonna result in. Okay, you being pricked. See that? How the scriptures all um uh, line up? Okay, this is taking a while. All right, but we can see it here. Yep, we can just read. Oh, here it goes. It says the act of piercing or pricking. Okay, the sensation of being pierced uh, sharply. Okay, and that's the whole plan. When you go into the Holy Scriptures, okay, is to, to pierce you, to penetrate you. All right, and from there, all right, uh, uh, govern you, watch you. All right. And everything be on a grid, including your thoughts and that there he's completely God. OK, so the scriptures give us the game. OK. Who will pity a charmer that is bitten with the serpent or as any as come nigh to wild beast? All right. So one that goeth to a sinner and is defiled with him in his sins. And this is the man of sin. So the last thing. All right, we want to do in this time is to lean on him. He's not faithful. As the scriptures say, Proverbs 25 and 19, confidence in an unfaithful man, okay, in the time of trouble is like a broken tooth and a foot out of joint, okay, NLT, okay, and he has been nothing but unfaithful to you Israelites. He's been unfaithful to his own people. He's been unfaithful to all of the heathen, but somehow you're going to trust him when it counts, all right. Putting confidence in an unreliable person in times of trouble is like chewing with a broken tooth. All right. When you need a root canal. OK. And you hungry. OK. And you trust. All right, I'm a chew and you chew right there. And that, the, the rest is history. That nerve, that piece of rice touched that nerve. OK. And, and the rest is history. Those are the worst headaches. That's like trusting in uh, 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 Biden. OK. We should be well trained in the understanding that this man is not good. OK, and leaning on the Lord is the way to go. So putting confidence in an unreliable person in times of trouble is like chewing with a broken tooth or walking with a lame foot. OK, now. Let's get this real quick, too. All right. This is Ecclesiastes 10 and 4. If the spirit of the ruler rise up against thee, leave not thy place for yielding pacifieth great offenses. You see that? If the spirit of the ruler rise up against you, you're not supposed to be hasty to leave your place. And what is our place? Righteousness, wisdom, fear of the Lord, long suffering, waiting on the Lord. Which in this world sounds weak because this world is based on instant gratification. Well, the Lord puts people through test. He puts his chosen through test. OK, in the end result, he'll show you that trust in him is better than trusting in the devil. OK, and you have to have the mindset, I'll rather go back to the spiritual realm to allow this devil to put a mark in, in me and my family. OK, I'll rather go back to the spiritual realm. OK, so if the ruler rise up against you and that's what happened with this assault starting in 2020, he rose up. OK, and people got scared. People lost a complete faith. The, 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 the Christian church, oh, my goodness. They were, you know, you, you, you may have had one, 
out of every 1,000 pastors saying no. And most of them were Edomites. You see? And in Israel, you know, you had this gray area approach from particular people. I wouldn't do it. You know, some people, well, I wouldn't do it, but you can. Well, I don't know you. What? Or just flat out do it. Ecclesiastes 8 and 3. Be not hasty to go out of his sight. Stand not in an evil thing, for he doeth whatsoever please him. See? NLT that. Okay? You're not supposed to be hasty to leave the sight of the Lord, man. Just because the uh, situation seems, all right, uh, to not be in your favor. When we're full, we're supposed to be what? We're supposed to be soaking in the oil, man. Okay? This word is supposed to be a part of you. You're supposed to know, all right, the different uh, situations where the Lord came through. Okay? And brothers go into those things. Let's read this real quick. All right? It says, don't try to avoid doing your duty. And don't stand with those who plot evil, for the king can do whatsoever he wants. And ultimately, who, who, who controls the mind of the king? Okay? Who, who controls your destiny? Who, who, who ordained all things from the foundation of the earth? Did the so-called white man? Did Biden? Did the, did the World Economic Forum? Hell no. Okay? So we're not here to push no weak message, man. This is deadly serious. You see? Let's get this one last scripture, and then we'll get into some uh, videos and articles. Okay? This is the book of Sirach, the 11th chapter. In the 11 verses says, there is one that laboreth and take it pains and make it haste and is such the more behind. All right. You laboring, you're, you're making haste in a time of trouble. You're not leaning on the Lord. OK. <laughs> you got leaders who are selling out because all of these leaders who were saying to go ahead and juice, they're getting they got paid. You best believe those who openly came out and promoted that got paid, inclu including ISUPK. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> it says, so there is one that laboreth and taketh pains and maketh haste and is the such much the much more behind. So it looks like you're doing what's right. Okay, you, you look like you won't point. All right. But you're behind, man. It says, and again, there is another that is slow and have need of help, wanting ability and full of poverty. Yet the eye of the Lord looketh upon him for good and set it him up from his low estate. OK, even if you lose a job. OK, you think provision and, 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 and everything comes from this white man and what, what, what you have through him. Ultimately, it all came from the Lord. See. See. And you don't want to have the mindset of a whore. Read Hosea, the second chapter. Israel is likened unto a whore who says, I'm going to go unto my lovers who gave me my bread, my flax, my clothes. See, because via the curse, you have to go to this enemy for all things. All right. But you have to have the mind of the elect. That's why the scriptures say put therefore on the elect. You got to think like the elect. You got to think like the men and women of old. OK. <laughs> and what and, and, and see their decision making, those who were in the right graces of Yahweh, Shai, when they made decisions, it wasn't based upon prospering in that time, in that life, because they knew that they would come back. They were investing in the kingdom of heaven, even all the way back then, and, and some of us are them back. Prosperity and, and, and adversity, life and death, poverty and riches come from the Lord. See, wisdom, knowledge and understanding of the law are of the Lord. Love and the way of good works are from him. Air and darkness have their beginning together with sinners and evil shall wax old with them that glory therein. All right. You follow this devil. OK, you're going to find yourself in a destructive situation. But you think, though, you hate laboring and hasting. All right. That, that, that you're doing the right thing when this devil is always going to do what the devil would do when it's all said and done. OK. So. 
let's go here real quick. Well, this is a good video too by the brother like Tazawam, Stand the Spirit 144. I didn't mean to pull that up, but he's basically bringing out here that, uh, you know, uh, Germany and U UK reveal energy bailouts to avert economic damage. So basically, as the brother's explaining, you can look it up, grinding, ceasing, and EU divided. Okay, which these EU nations are getting ready to turn on America in a major way because those sanctions are destroying their economies, which ultimately, when it's all said and done, all right, it's a systematic collapse, all right, but the Lord is going to put it in their minds, all right, to eventually just, just full-out rebel against America. That's prophetic, okay? But uh, basically, with these, you know, uh, high energy costs, you know, they're they're having climate lockdowns. There's talks of all kinds. You, you got to... You know, particular stores are having to shut down at uh, early, right? So with that, the government is coming in saying, we'll bail you out of this situation, all right? Which ultimately, what is that going to mean? Okay, because these particular uh, businesses are going to say, okay, we'll take your bail out. But ultimately, that means you no longer control your destiny, all right, and when and how much energy you can have and what you have access to, how long you can stay open will now be in their control. See, which that's all systematic because, as they say, all right, you, all right, won't have a damn thing, but you will be smiling. But I didn't need, I didn't mean to go to that. I wanted to go here, okay, uh, to this brother's statement in this video. This is uh, the beloved brother Ayashimov, GMS Prisoners of Yahweh Shai, is one of his pages. Um, beautiful videos, subscribe and be edified. Open forum, free from bondage. Okay, flee, free from bondage. And this truth has made us free because without this truth, we would have thought that we were supposed to follow this devil because that's what this world teaches, right? We would have thought that following this devil was the way to go. Okay, but now we're free from that bondage when we have come into this truth. OK, we're free from the bondage of the God of this world and the thoughts of this world and what this world uh, uh, deems good and acceptable. We're free from that bondage. That is a bondage that our people are in. And a lot of you Israelites are still in bondage to that. That's why you can't find comfort in the truth. OK, because you're still in bondage to the God of this world. All right. So let's play what this brother says, because. And then we'll get some uh, some some videos and some articles. See, Esau is in the way of life, man. You know, if you if, if Esau is not your biggest complaint, you don't understand what's going on. Okay, there's no way a brother rubbing you the wrong way should be a daily complaint. You know, okay, you made, you got, you got off your chest. Okay, cool. But there's no way that this man shouldn't be a daily complaint. Okay, this man is in the way of life, and he's constantly taken away from it. Like the, 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 the NWO is him taking more of the little piece of freedom and life that you got. Okay, this man needs to be removed, man. Okay, and you have a shot is going to be that great champion that come take down this modern Goliath, man. Yeah, man, let's get the book of uh, Psalms 98, all right, because he said Yahweh Shai is going to be that victor, okay, over this Goliath, man, okay, like David trusted in his rock. Well, our rock is Yahweh Shai, okay, that's what that was symbolic of, who's going to slay this giant, all right, and we've been preparing all right, this whole time through these tribulations for everything this devil is getting ready to bring. But all right, but when it's at the end of the day, the 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 heavenly Father is going to be victorious over this devil. Okay, and like he said, this man should be a complaint. Okay, you should be prophesying against this man. Okay, let's read uh, Psalms ninety-eight and one. Okay. 
Oh, sing unto Yahweh a new song. And, the, and within the new song is victory over this devil, victory over the beast, victory over the image. None of our people in the world are talking about victory over, the, uh, over this man and his system. They, they're, they're either they're ignoring it, okay, they're tiptoeing around particular subjects, or they're talking about how we need to come together and get a bank. They ain't talking about in line in their spirit with Yahweh Bashim Shai. That is the only victory. OK, because this 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 fall came through Adam. All right. And the victory has to come through him. As the scriptures label him the second Adam. OK, he's going to take the serpent down this time. And that faithful woman, he will not allow that serpent to penetrate. And we have to believe and trust in that because that is the only way out of here. OK, he came and he conquered death and was obedient as the son of the most high, which gives us what? A way back to uh, uh to 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 the uh righteousness, okay, and perfection that we once had. Okay. Give me one second here. <laughs> All right. So it says. Oh, sing unto Yahweh a new song, for he have done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have gotten him to victory. That's Yahweh Shai. Okay? His right hand and his holy arm. That's what Yahweh Shai is known as in the Bible. All right? Which when you go into the right hand, it's what? In ancient, if you understand how ancient, all right, kingdoms worked. Okay? The right hand man of the king was likened unto a secretary. See, secretary wasn't this dumbed down, weak little thing it is in this system in the ancient world. The secretary was the most important man to the kingdom or uh, uh, to, to how it's being ran. You see, in the right hand of the most high is his only begotten son. All right. And his right hand is going to get him the victory. It's going to be a, a flawless first round knockout. With all of the you, you stuff you devils got, all that you're planning, OK, it's going to be the, the right hand is ultimately already has victory over you. We just have to wait for it to play out in the flesh. The Lord have made known his salvation, his righteousness, hath he openly shown in the sight of the heathen. OK, and it starts with us being raised up. All right. But we're speaking into what the, the, the end of uh, the end of this world into existence. All right. Now, let's go here because you heard what the brother said okay in this in this video okay let's let's go to this video right here and we're only going to play a little bit of it or as much as the spirit allows but this is off of uh all right brightian all right the title the the the, the title of the climate change terraforming forming warning for humanity Let's listen to the plans of this devil, all right, and see if this is a goddamn game. You are living through a terraforming operation that's designed to alter Earth's atmosphere in order to cause global famine and mass extermination of the human race. Now, very few people are going to tell you this. Very few people are connecting the dots about the so-called climate change movement the war on carbon, forced mass starvation, famine, depopulation, and extermination of the human race, but they're all connected. So the war on carbon is a war on humanity. And the mechanism of that war is very simple, since you need carbon to grow food crops. You need carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. And the higher the level of carbon dioxide, the more food crops are produced each season from the same amount of acreage. Understand that. I mean, this, this is the key point right here. This is why the globalists are engaged in carbon sequestration. This is why they're removing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. It is in order to reduce crop yields so that they can achieve mass famine, starvation, collapse of the human race. Terraforming is the, the operation. These giant carbon sequestration machines that they are setting up, even in the Midwest, there's a giant operation. They're using eminent domain to seize farmland right now in places like uh, Iowa and Illinois. 
They're setting up these massive machines. It's kind of like out of that movie Oblivion with Tom Cruise and Morgan Freeman. Remember that movie, science fiction? They had giant machines from an alien race that were sucking the ocean water off planet Earth and stealing the water. It's kind of like except the machines that are being built right now are being built by us, human beings, to suck carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. And they always say human beings, but it's ultimately who's at the forefront of it is the Edomites, the elites. And hide that CO2 underground in a carbon sequestration footpath in order to make sure that world food crops fail. So understand that Every person pushing the climate change narrative is demanding mass starvation. Every one of them. Whether they realize it or not, that's what they're calling for, is mass starvation. You lower CO2 levels, you can't grow food crops nearly as efficiently. You raise CO2, you'll be able to grow more food. So this is why they want to move off of fossil fuels and this is why they are shutting down the fossil fuel industry, because they know that if humanity stops emitting carbon into the atmosphere, that the food crops will fail and mass starvation will bring down the global population. This is what they know. And so right now what's happening in the United States is that fuel refineries, you know, fossil fuel refinery plants are shutting down all over the place. There was a big warning from an organization called MISO, M-I-S-O. It's like the, the Midwestern, uh, I forgot the name. It's like an electrical cooperative that runs the power grid in places like Illinois. And they said, yeah, we're shutting down. I mean, we're losing all these coal plants that are, they're, they're being shut down. Some of them are, are becoming too old. Some of them have been shut down because they've lost their licensing or you know, they're, they're, the government won't allow them to continue to run. So they're shutting these down. And they announced that electricity in Illinois is going to go up by 54% <laughs> beginning this month, June of 2022. 54% increase. Oh, and you're going to have rolling blackouts on top of that too. So there's your little bonus round right there. You get to pay 50% more and have rolling blackouts. What's not to like? But the real story on this and why they're shutting down refineries and coal operations and fossil fuels and pipelines and natural gas, why they're shutting it down, it's not even just directly to try to crush the economy and make everybody, you know, thrust everybody into uh, poverty and uh, desperation and all that, although that's part of it, but the real goal is to stop the CO2 emissions because that's what will achieve global starvation. See, if they take CO2 out of the atmosphere, and the way they're going to do that, by the way, is you know, to halt emissions and then run carbon sequestration machines to pull it out of the atmosphere, then they can affect food crops worldwide. This is how they can achieve mass starvation in Africa without ever having to go to Africa because the planet shares all the same air, right? I mean, whatever you put into the air or pull out of the air in the United States is also going to get pulled out of the air. I mean. The, the air is all mixed up all over the planet. We share the same air, obviously. I mean, eventually, you know, the jet streams and so on, the, the air mixes up and moves around and it's all the same air. You pull CO2 out of the air in one spot, that's lowering the CO2 levels everywhere on the planet. And you know that the globalists have been trying to achieve mass starvation of Africa for a very long time. Now, I paused it and I skipped forward because he starts to talk about how the juice itself, you know, in Africa and different places was a part of, you know, depopulation and often people. OK. And though, you know, they have this particular saying that they're no longer going to trip if you speak against. All right. I'm not going to trust my enemy because as the scriptures say, he's a witch. And he's laying snares whithersoever he can so that you can be lured in so that he can get you. Because particular brothers that we're talking about earlier, how particular of their videos are still being taken down. Old videos. Okay, but let's go back and listen to a little bit more. But this is ultimately the wicked at work. Okay? And as the scriptures say, all right, Revelation 11 and 18, it says, And the nations were angry. 
in thy wrath is come in the time of the dead that they should be judged and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants, the prophets. This is the time that we're in. The nations are angry. Everybody's mad. Okay, the 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 uproars of the people, the wars being talked about. All right, the, everybody's angry. Perplexity. All right, couples arguing in 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 uh, grocery stores over what groceries to get and not to get because of the inflation. Okay, all manner of things are happening, and this is just the beginning of sorrows. Okay, so thy wrath is here. All right, judgment is going out. People are bugging out. Demons are hopping on men. Okay, it says in the time of the dead that they should be judged. The dead are those who do the works of death. Okay, ultimately it's starting with Esau, but our own people and the rest of the heathen, all right, all they're about is death. All right, our talking point is life. All right, all they're about is death. Okay, that's all they're about, the works of death. And the Lord is addressing that vibration. He's not with it. Okay. So judgment is coming to those kind of people, but on the, on the flip side, and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy service, the prophets, and to the saints, and to them that fear thy name, small and great, and shouldest destroy them which destroy the earth, which ultimately is Esau. Esau is the end of the world. Who's at the forefront of what we're reading about here, what we're listening to in this video? The Edomites. Okay, so let's listen to a little bit more. We're not going to listen to it all. You can look this up. All right, it's off of a health ranger report. All right, but this is what's going on. While they're putting all of this, these enchantments in front of you, okay, like the, the, the queen, okay, this is what they're planning worldwide. This is what they're setting up. This is what it all means. So the globe has been trying to take out Africa for a long time. They finally figured out a way to do it, and it's by collapsing the food supply but in order to do that, they had to create a climate change crisis that they just fabricated. They just made it all up. There's not an ounce of truth to anything about climate change that is being put out there by the science community or by the mainstream media or the White House or the Democrats or any of these people. It's all a complete and total fraud. They've said CO2 is a pollutant. No, it's not. It's a nutrient. It's the world's most important nutrient in fact, for life on Earth. Maybe you could argue that uh, O2, oxygen, perhaps that's the most important, But because you gotta breathe, but you also gotta eat. And if you don't have CO2, you don't have food crops and you can't eat. So maybe let's say O2 is the first most important, then CO2 would be the second most important. I call it the God molecule. God wants us to have carbon dioxide because that's what's used in photosynthesis, people. Photosynthesis. You combine sunlight energy with carbon dioxide and water and you get plant metabolism and then the byproduct is O2, which is what we breathe. And this is the other part of the story that I wanted to get to anyway. So plant life and see when we go into the creation story, the Heavenly Father created these things so that it, it, life can be good. You notice it says it was good. All right. But the devil, as the scriptures say, would have war with Amalek from generation to generation. Okay, there will be a war. The, the, the Most High and Amalek will be at war. He will be at war with the Most High, and this is a part of that war. Them that destroy the earth. The Heavenly Father created all right, uh, uh, human beings and plant life to be linked. All right, but this devil goes around the earth chopping down the trees, destroying atmospheres. All right, and ultimately, when you go into particular neighborhoods where you see no trees, notice it's, it's, it's more crime. Okay, notice the people are more hostile. And the devil knows this, especially when you go amongst the hood, Jake. Okay, what do you see? You see one tree here, another tree there. Okay, the, 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 there should be way more trees because trees promote unity. Trees promote, you know, uh, uh, clarity. Trees promote rational thinking. They promote relaxation. Okay, but he's put you in this atmosphere where there's just so far too many trees. And we don't even understand how detrimental that is to our clarity, to who we, to, to, to life. You see, even in our law, 
Okay, this is Deuteronomy 20 and 19. When thou besiege a city a long time in making war against it to take it, thou shalt not destroy the trees by forcing an axe upon them. All right, for thou mayest eat of them. All right, uh, uh, the, as, as he's getting ready to get into the importance of plant life. All right, <laughs> that's how you eat. All right, but, but, but more importantly, that's how you eat outside of uh, another man's control. <laughs> And see, that's what they're getting ready to to cut off. All right, this is why the book of Revelation, the sixth chapter, talks about uh, 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 the pale horse, famine, death. Okay, and the Heavenly Father has ordained these things. But it's through that straight gate, it's through those difficult times that the elect are going to be delivered. So it has to happen. Okay, but you, when you, by forcing an axe upon them, and this is what Esau is known as, the tree cutter in the scriptures and Isaiah, the 14th chapter, it likens him, okay, into the feller that chops down the trees. And that's what he does, okay? And men and nations are likened unto trees as well. He's chopped, he's chopped down the nations. But in a physical sense, he's went and chopped down all of the trees, okay? This is, a, this is, this is his M.O. The law tells you now there's particular trees you do cut down for you know if you need to burn wood or if you need to build houses and the lord has that set out cedar wood okay you have particular wood all right shittim wood there's woods that are used for the purpose of building that's okay but see there are particular trees that you shouldn't cut down okay well, uh, one that's very important that we know of is what the fir tree which is the chris what they call the christmas tree now, if you take that out of an ecosystem, that is taking away uh, uh, food, okay, for a particular species and habitation where they can uh, uh, lay nests or do particular things for particular uh, uh, animals when it's cold. Why? Because the fir tree lives throughout the winter. It never dies. That's why the heathen worshipped it. But they cut that down, all right, and that's a business, all right, a million to billion dollar business, okay, that ultimately they, they chop those trees down, okay, and that ruins the ecosystem. These are things we haven't thought about or wasn't taught, all right, through the wisdom of this world and through church. This devil is systematically destroying the earth because he knows he's going to be destroyed. He's like, I'm going to take everybody with me, okay? So there's particular trees that you don't cut down, all right, so that you can eat of them and it brings mental clarity. And this is why I like to get into the, the ecosystem. Somebody can post a few uh, benefits of trees in the comment section so you can learn. All right. Whoever the spirit jumps on, just post a few benefits. All right. Uh, uh, of trees. All right. To life. You see. It says, and thou shall not cut them down for the tree of the field is man's life <laughs> the tree of the field is man's life okay let's read that in nlt it says when you are attacking a town and the war drags on you must not cut down the trees with your axes you may eat the fruit but do not cut down the trees all right are the trees your enemies that you should attack them ask yourself that esau acts as if the trees are his enemy this is why the earth is is groaning okay as the scriptures say the creature groaneth <laughs> let's get that real quick the creature is groaning man all right this is romans 8 and 19 for the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of god the whole creation is waiting on the sons of God to be put back in their proper order because what that means is that everything is able to operate as the Heavenly Father wanted it to operate. That's the kingdom. All creation being able to do, all right, what it was put on the earth to do, start with man and then woman and then child. But then the earth around us is going to be turned back into paradise. You see? It's through our culture that this earth is going to be turned back to paradise through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shai. See? Verse 22. For we know that the whole creation groaneth. Creation is groaning 
and travaileth in pain together until now. Why? Because the sons of God ain't ruling, so everything is out of course. And that's one of the things that we should have learned from this fall, if you didn't learn anything. Okay, going up against Yahweh Bashim uh, the rebelling against his way, all right, uh, for us men and women was not it. It's not cute. Okay, so the, the, are the trees your enemies that you should attack them? <laughs> like, and, and that's what Esau does worldwide, and that affects people. Okay, let's see if there's a precept to this. Let's see here. <laughs> Matthew 3 and 10 and now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees every uh, tree which bring it forth fruit good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire that's how this society is alright that's what happens in this world man see the whole bible deals with um uh deals with agriculture it's all over the bible but there you go Okay, it says only the trees which thou knowest that they be not trees for meat. All right, thou shalt destroy and cut them down because they're made for what? Uh, 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 you know, building, you know, burning. It says, and thou shalt build bulwarks against the city that maketh war with thee until it be subdued. NLT. Let's see here. You may only cut down trees that you know are not valuable for food. All right. Use them to make the equipment that you need to attack the enemy until it falls. So you can also use particular wood for particular uh, weapons when you're in war. But the mindset overall of trees, you know, is a is a lost uh, cause. All right. Uh, in our culture, all right? in so-called black culture, man. And that ain't our culture. This is second Ezra's 11. All right. <laughs> in 43 speaking to you Edomites and, and this is talking about ancient Rome but it applies now as well it says verse 43 therefore is thy wrongful dealing come up to the highest and I pride unto the mighty the highest has also looked upon the proud times and behold they are ended and his abominations are fulfilled all right and therefore appear no more eagle all right you Edomites are likened unto the eagle in Obadiah and all of these Edomite nations have bore the eagle. When you look at the uh, beast system, all of these nations bear the eagle. And America exudes the eagle. Okay? But this is going back to anciently ancient Rome. Okay? Nor thy horrible wings, nor thy wicked feathers, nor thy malicious heads, nor thy whole for claws, nor all thy vain body. Which that's symbolic of your rulers, your Caesars, your presidents, your, your, all of the people. And they're all back. OK, they're all back doing their wickedness. OK, for judgment. Nobody gets away that all the earth may be refreshed and may return from all right, being delivered from thy violence and that she may hope for the judgment and mercy of he that made her. All right. That's the most high God, Yahweh. All right. Through Yahweh, Shah and the holy angels. And this is why we care so much about the earth and about how it's being uh, ran. OK, but this devil all right, is uh, getting ready to wage war on the people via the climate, via the earth, via resources. Okay? <laughs> this is uh, Revelation 6 and 7. And when he had opened up the fourth seal, I, saw, I heard the voice thereof saying, Come see, or of the fourth beast. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse in his name that set on him was death. And hell followed with him hard times, okay? And power was given unto him, all right? Power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with the sword and with hunger and with death and with the beasts of the field. So a lot of crazy judgments are getting ready to happen. Let's play a little bit more of this, but you, you, I'll put it in the description box and you can look it up on your own. But he's going to go to, to the importance of Plant life, which is why this whole NWO is centered around, okay, uh, you not having access. Because if they control all of the food, 
just like Joseph in Egypt, all right, uh, Pharaoh said, you have to go to him and do whatever he says, meaning those who have the control of the resources, all right, um, ultimately can dictate your life and whatever they tell you to do, you're going to have to do it, okay? But see, the elect have a different mindset. Which is that when they lower CO2, they reduce plant life all across the planet. And when they reduce plant life, then you don't have as many plants producing oxygen, which is what we breathe, like I just said. And that means oxygen levels will fall. As oxygen levels fall, human beings and all the animals that breathe oxygen will slowly asphyxiate. You will have people dropping dead from an inability to provide enough oxygen to their brains or to their hearts. Now, oxygen is carried by the hemoglobin molecule in your blood. The hemoglobin molecule is made non-functional by the spike protein that's found. <laughs> All right, so watch that video. You already know where he was going. Okay. Now, this is another thing, you know, with all of that that's been given out, all of that juice, these people are walking around, and now it says STD expert warns of an out-of-control situation as gonorrhea and syphilis, all right, uh, cases rise in the U.S. Now, in the curses, okay, that was one of the uh, signs of Egypt was the, the, the diseases, because why? They lived a lifestyle that was outside of the laws. That leads to what? Uh, disease. Okay. Let's look up the word diseases. I forget where it said, but I know it's in the curses. All right, this is uh, Exodus 15 and 26. And if thou will diligently hearken unto the voice of Yahweh, all right, thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments and to keep all his statues, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, all right, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. Okay? Deuteronomy 7 and 15, the Lord will take away from thee all sickness and will put none of the evil diseases of Egypt, which thou knowest. All right? And we know of these diseases, right? All right? We see people plagued with them. All right? And you can heal yourself because we're, we're under the curses, so we're, we're subject to... To particular, but you can heal yourself, man, with faith and prayer and the proper obedient regimen. You can heal yourself of these diseases that come from Egypt. Okay, it says, which thou knowest, all right, upon thee, but will lay them upon all them that hate thee. So all manner of plagues are being put on people. Okay. <laughs> and that was part of the curses that we would have to partake of those diseases. And Jake leads the league in a lot of these uh, statistics. But there you go. Okay, STD expert warns, all right, an out-of-control situation as gonorrhea and syphilis cases rise in the U.S. So these people are all walking around, okay, with, 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 with this stuff, and you don't know what the hell is going on. So brothers and you sisters, be careful out here, man. All right, now is not the time to be uh, a person who is just uh, living in lust and and, and following the flesh. Now we're human, okay? But it's best to, to, to be mindful and to be watchful, all right? STD experts are warning of an all-time high cases of syphilis and gonorrhea, all right? <laughs> it says, and Monday, at a Monday conference, one expert called the situation out of control they say at-home tests, more condom use, and better STD clinics could help. No, the destruction of you devils is what can help. Okay? And people, oh, oh look, at, look at people bringing up the scriptures. See, the scriptures are the only answer to this mess that, that, that's in the planet Earth. Because all of this really comes from the lifestyle of the Egyptians. The Egyptians were nasty as hell. So how is that the way for us? Okay, the, the, these cats who are in the comedic sign, look, look at what they're doing. Walking around with a ponytail hanging off the side of their head, looking nasty, got lipstick on. Okay, eyeliner. 
They ain't talking about the downfall of Babylon because America is the spirit of Egypt. So they love this place. They were just complaining a little bit about the uh, uh, things Esau do here and there, but they ain't. These niggas ain't, ain't ain't against this world, man. Okay, because they should be warning you. Okay, as the scriptures say, let's get that in the book of uh, uh, Ezekiel, the thirty fourth chapter. Ezekiel, the thirty fourth chapter. Okay. Ezekiel 34 and 2, son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel, prophesy and say unto them, thus saith the Lord God unto the shepherds, woe be unto the shepherds of Yasha'ala who do feed themselves. And that's your leaders. All right. You're feeding yourselves. OK, let's read this in the NLT. That's what you niggas are worried about, your own belly. Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds, the leaders of Israel. Give them this message from the sovereign Lord. And that's what we're doing. But you people who call yourself Israelites, y'all say this is hating. Look what's getting ready to happen. Look what's happening on earth. Look what these people are planning. The leaders of Israel, all right, this is what the Lord wants you to hear. What sorrow awaits you shepherds who feed yourselves instead of your flocks? Shouldn't shepherds feed their sheep? All right, and you got to be in the mindset of feeding the sheep. The scriptures say you have to be diligent of knowing the state of your flocks. When I haven't put up something, you know, I'm feeling bad. I'm worried about, damn, are they waiting on me? Do they do they, do they want to, are they, damn, damn, what if I know that? You know, you got to always constantly be feeding the flock. That's what we were given this life for. See? Verse 4, I'm going to jump to verse 4. The disease have you not strengthened. All right, we're supposed to be building up the hedge. Neither have ye healed that which was sick. Neither have ye bound up that which is broken. All right, you niggas have gotten your positions to feed yourselves and your egos. Okay, that demon you had on you in the world when you wanted to be a wrestler. Okay, or a WWF demon or a G-unit demon or a dipset demon. You just basically came into the truth and said, well, I'm going to flip it and I'll just do that with this. Okay, <laughs> why do you think Johanna act like that? He wanted to be a wrestler. Okay, <laughs> it says, I'm just playing. But you, you got Jake with demons on him that they bring from the world into the truth. And then they try to use the truth to fill their own belly and say, this is the truth. Now, the Lord, look, we're going to have time for all of that in the kingdom. Our hearts desire as far as what we, our talents and stuff like that. Now, we don't suppress our talents. Brothers do stuff. OK, uh, uh, but but ultimately, when people see us, it should be at the what should be at the forefront of it all is the, the understanding this word, not us. All right. What does the scripture say in Second Corinthians, the fourth chapter? OK, when Yahweh gets his respect, then we're going to be able to be appreciated and push what the heavenly father has put in us because we are some very creative people. We're Israelites. OK. Second Corinthians four and five, for we preach not ourselves, but Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, the Lord. All right. And ourselves, your servants for Yahweh Shai's sake. Let's read this here in the NLT. You see, we don't go around preaching about ourselves. And ourselves, your, your, your bond servants for Yahweh Shai's sake. So we're not here to preach about ourselves, give you our life story. Now, brothers do share experiences that happens. OK, but we're not here to, to push our own agendas at the end of the day. OK, we're here to, to strengthen you in the, in the truth, man. And that's my heart's desire is that you know the truth. All right, that listen. OK, but you have men out here. Who ruled the sheep, as it says here, neither have you sought that was which is lost, all right, neither have you brought again that which which was driven away, and how ultimately were we driven away in mind in spirit, and here it is, you want to come and push this world on Israel, who's already broken, confused, we don't need to stroke Israel's ego, we don't need to make Israel feel good, niggas have mastered feeling good, but niggas have not mastered. Okay, a uh, 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 fear of the Lord. 
Neither have ye sought that which was lost, but with force and with cruelty have ye ruled them, man. You got particular men who've been found out to be cruel and wicked leaders, man. That's why they get kicked out. <laughs> All right. It says, and they were scattered because there is no shepherd. And they became meat to all the beasts of the field when they were scattered. See, when our people are away from the Lord, all right, they're, remember, we're sheep. So you go out into the field and a lion's out there in the, in the form of Esau or, or a damn uh, a hyena, okay, or, or, or a fox. Okay, what, did, what do you think is going to happen to the sheep? Sheep aren't aggressive animals. They can get mad and stubborn at times, but they're extremely simple. They need a, a shepherd. But when they are in order, they are the most beautiful animals. That's why the Lord takes a liking to them. That's his favorite animal. And you'll look at it and be like, what's so special about a sheep? But study the way of the sheep and their order and how they have order amongst themselves and the relationship between them and their shepherd. You see? This is a beautiful book, man. So, verse, let me jump here real quick. Verse 7, therefore... Ye shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. As I live, saith the Lord God, surely because my flock became a prey and my flock became meat to every beast of the field because there was no shepherd. Neither did my shepherds search for my flock, but the shepherds fed themselves and not my flock. Okay, therefore, O ye shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. Thus said the Lord God, I am against the shepherds and I will require my flock at their hand and cause them to cease from feeding the flock. Okay, neither shall the shepherds feed themselves anymore, for I will deliver my flock out of their mouth, that they may not be meat for them. Okay, and you have many wolves out there in sheep's clothing. Okay, and they're devouring the flock. Okay, putting you in a stupid mindset. All right, while all of this hell, while, while all of this hell is taking place on earth. All right, so when you look at 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 what this devil is planning here, all right, or what the elite are planning, all right, this executive order, all right, that Biden just passed is dealing with what, all right, trans, which is what, you're transcending, all right, human capability, all right, you can see the rest of the title right there, all right, <laughs> all right, this is where they're going with it. OK, and this is ultimately all leading to what John, the revelator, saw in Revelation, the 13th chapter. OK, on the Isle of Patmos, he received that vision so you can go hard about it here now in these latter days, because when you read Revelation 14, a part of the new song is the men of the Lord. Speaking against everything this devil is doing, it says transhumanists and technocrats and big. All right. Farm have cracked. The U.S. government wide open to flood the bio economy. OK, now the crazy thing is people already work in the economy to keep the economy going. It's human beings that keep things running and, and flowing and drive these trucks and move, you know, products and, you know, buy and sell. That's all. But but what what's the new bio economy all about? If humans, your biology, your body, right, your human is already doing that. What, why, what do they mean, bioeconomy? What, what are they talking about? <laughs> all right. It says, all right, with taxpayer money and labor to push the frontier, all right, to gene mod, okay, you see this word here, okay, of all, see that? That's what it's all about. See that in that blue? That's what it's all about, to change your, to change the coding, to, 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 Make man in their image for their fourth industrial revolution. It says of all living things and especially humans, this will ultimately spark, spark the biggest public backlash in modern history. There's going to be a lot of people against this. And they're subtly bringing it in. OK, now, when you look at this executive order that was passed by Biden, it goes in, in this article, it goes into it. All right. And see, what is it all predicated upon? OK, to improve the quality of our lives in the environment. OK, so things are getting ready to tighten up. OK, we've been saying it. OK, but the the 
you know, the plan didn't work. Now they're coming with something else. See? The climate crisis. See? To where they got to get it. They got to be able to put a cap, all right, on, on, on CO2 emissions. They got to be able to put a cap on what people have, what they have not, how often they travel, where they go for the sake to save the earth. <laughs> So you can read this, you look this up, it's off of blacklisted news, but um, let's read, let's read within the, uh, a little bit within the bill, it says, for biotechnology and biomanufacturing to help us achieve our societal goals, the United States needs to invest in foundational scientific capabilities. <laughs> and where's, the, I thought the MOTB was, uh, was uh Christianity. Christianity is the thing of the past. That's on the decline. Okay, how could money be the MOTB? You got weirdos, all right, who, who go around, all right, teaching in football helmets and hats. <laughs> just you know, hats just uh, they're talking about the MOTB is money. Now, they're doing away with paper money, which is the MOTB, but then what are they gonna bring in place of that? Shut up. Okay, but anyway, this is what they're saying. We need to develop. All right. See that word. All right. Engineering technology. You see the word. This is what Biden. This is what this law. This is what this bill is saying. Right. This order. We need to develop. Okay. Engineering technologies and techniques to be able to write. All right. Cir circuitor circuitry all right let's look this word up i don't like to be ignorant on words sometimes you just be like whatever and you keep going but you, you, there's power in words man and that's one of the traits our apostles and elders taught us all right it says we need to develop these engineering technologies and techniques to be able to write Circuitry, circuitry tree, cells, and predictability program biology in the same way in which we write software. So the same way they're able to write software and do things with computers, they want to be able to do that with you human, human beings via your mind and your genetic makeup. All right, that's why it's called, all right, trans, all right, uh, uh, human. All right, as the devil told Eve in the garden, the serpent, all right, you should be like God, <laughs> okay? Meaning what they got is better than paradise. It says electric circuits, a circuit or system of circuits performing a particular function in an electronic, okay, device, <laughs> a device, <laughs> Oh man, may the Lord get us out of here, man. This is a damn. We we too, I'm too goddamn big to be sitting here tiptoeing around words. Fucking 250, 60 something pound. All right, Negro, looking like a retired Dallas cowboy, sitting here tiptoeing around words. It's a goddamn shame, man. But this is all a result of the devil's rulership. It says, so you can see where they're going. It says, so the same way we're able to write software and program computers, all right, unlock the power of biological data. Let's look up the word biological so you can see what they're saying. I mean, do they have to be any more blatant? Okay. <laughs> biological data. All right. And in that movie, uh, in, in Planet, she, Siri was in your mind, but she took over. I hate to give it away, but, I mean, it really starts, I mean, because, you know, certain movies take time to develop. Um, well, that one just, it just jumps right into the, <laughs> you know. It says, relating to biology or living organisms. Okay. Let 
microorganisms, toxins, biological origin, relating to or involving the use of microorganisms or toxins or biological organ origin as weapons of war. <laughs> so we see where it's going. It says including through computer tools and artificial intelligence and in advance the science of scale up production while reducing the obstacles for commercialization so that innovative technologies and products can reach markets faster. So they're not hiding it. And it's funny how many times improve is here. But when you get into these, you know, bolded parts, okay, they, they, those are the parts you should read. So I'll try to put that in post-production, but, all right, you'll have to probably go to DuckDuckGo because I don't think Google puts, and I think DuckDuckGo doesn't, but I think if you search enough for this title, okay, it'll even take you to another um, website because the source is techno, uh, crassy dot com okay and crassy is like a rule as a matter of fact let's look up crassy real quick you got to know the meaning of words this is how this devil was able to you know uh you know undermine and perform a lot of witchcraft just through simple words as they say words um hold spells and this devil through wording has been able to just pull one over the, the simple term of him calling himself white okay crazy is an element and some word in greek origin meaning government there you go rule all right you have a democracy theocracy all right ruling by theories Okay, well, what what kind of rule are they trying to bring? Okay, a technocracy. See that? Techno is what? Technology. So they want to rule the world with artificial intelligence and technology. And you'd be a fool not to see it. Okay? And somehow, some way, Israelites who teach you Israelites not to trust the, the, the this man are silent about it very interesting anyway i'm not going to read too much more of that we know what this is leading to revelation 13 all right uh 16 and 17 read it if you haven't read it okay get in tune okay um and i had this as well and i'm not going to play too much of it but let me go all right, to this real quick. Um, because there's a lot of witchcraft going on. Now, this is um, a call for an uprising. All right, the Queen's Luciferian funeral ceremony. Okay? And he's going to get into a few things that are um, going to add to the point. All right, but first, give me one second here. Let me pull this up. Because to prove that this is all witchcraft all right you had this particular uh hey look at them you can't see that these people are evil would you leave your child with this man but you know what jake would think we're the ones that's gonna harm the child and then leave the child with this guy Shh. this is the breaking wand ritual or broken wand ceremony check it out And that's an empty coffin, but this is the, the, the queen's coffin, and this is clearly a ritual. You see people, oh, that's so beautiful. Oh, my God. Wow. <laughs> this is one of the best funerals. All right, but the whole time, now the uh, elder brother Required Kwan put me onto this. You know, I like to give people their credit. You know, brothers, 
Um, but and you can go look up more on this, but this is just a basic breakdown. It says the broken wand ceremony is a spiritual. This is off of a uh, looks like Wikipedia. All right. But you can look it up in other sources. All right. Because some people like to be leery of Wikipedia. Well, you can you can go find other sources that will point to the same thing. But it says the broken wand ceremony is a ritual performed at or shortly before the funeral of a magician. See? Now, what is America known as prophetically in Isaiah, the 47th chapter? The daughter of the Chaldeans. Okay? The daughter of the Chaldeans. Let's get that in Isaiah 47. Now, this is talking about Babylon the Great when we read this, but America came out of Britain. And Britain is essentially, uh, uh, you know, in the beast system as well. And ultimately, that's where all, all of this is owned out of anyway. Okay, but this is uh, Isaiah 47 and 1. Come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. Sit on the ground. There is no throne. Now, y'all sitting here talking about y'all going to assume the throne. Well, there is no throne, loser. O daughter of the Chaldeans. All right. And thou shalt no more be called tender and delicate. This is a future prophecy. Now, in the Neo-Babylonian Empire, all right, ran by Nebuchadnezzar, you also had the Chaldeans. Now, the Chaldeans are the Magi's of the uh, Neo-Babylonian Empire, the magicians, all right? Uh, yam ya yama all right? The territory in lesser, lower Mesopotamia, Babylon, okay? It says, those persons considered the wisest in the land by extension. Now, what kind of wisdom did they have? Okay, they were magicians. All you have to do is just type in ancient magi. And all of these people are a part of it. Okay, all of them are a part of this system. This is what they do. That's why the scripture in that chapter, as you go down, is going to say, stand now with thy enchantments. Okay, these were the witches and the warlocks of the Neo-Babylonian Empire. Those are the ones who behind closed doors really deal with the left-hand gods through Satan, ultimately. Okay, but when you, uh, Magi, the earliest known use of the word Magi was written, was in an inscription written by Darius the Great, which he's in the Bible. Okay. It says, known as... Uh, uh, the the Behushatan inscription, old Persian text, all right, pre-dating the Hellenistic period, referred to a magus, all right, because it, it, priest, it was dealing with their left-hand priesthood. You had the magicians in ancient Egypt, okay? It says the ancient magis, uh, yada, 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 and you can look this up. OK. But this is the men who, who dealt with, you know, the left hand wisdom. So going back here. The broken wand, the, the broken wand ceremony or wand is a ritual performed shortly before the funeral of a magician in which a wand or either. Either the wand which the magician used in performances <laughs> or a ceremonial is broken, indicating that. With the magician's death, the wand has uh, lost its magic. The first broken wand ceremony was held in 1926 after the death of Harry Houdini. And we ain't talking about Houdini who sung Friends. Okay, these people ain't your friends. It says the Society of Am American Magicians continues to hold an annual ceremony at Houdini's grave. So this was all a ceremony. Okay, this is all a ceremony. Let's see what else I put here. Yep, One World Religion Headquarters to soon open. Now, that was nine months ago. I remember doing a video on that. Okay. Biden's executive order signals alignment with WEF. <laughs> all right, and look up the, that if you don't know what it is. Yep, but the, uh, the what I just read... Um, 
you know that that's what's in this on that post so yeah the, the same way we're able to do with computers we want to be able to do that with human beings okay and this was a ritual see a bit of this and then we'll uh close out This is a time for judgment. Welcome to today's show. It doesn't take a scientist of rockets, AKA a rocket scientist, to figure out that these giant ceremonies are rituals. Now, most people just say, hey, that's just a funeral of the queen that we're all witnessing, when in reality, everything that they do, especially in the public eye, is a mass ritual. They want you to see their rituals. They want others who are a part of the Brotherhood, or I should say the Secret Society members, to see their rituals. That's the Queen's funeral. Shouldn't surprise anyone that it was a mass ritual. Now, I know for the most part, anyone out there that caught a glimpse of this saw the obvious, but there was something else that I wanted to point out too before I get into some of the obvious stuff now. The, it was a who's who of incestual bloodlines at the funeral, of course, as we saw Joe Biden, we saw Justin Trudeau, we saw some of the dictators show up there. And it's not a surprise either that they're talking about her funeral as if it's the end of an era. Because remember, even the monarchy, all of these systems of government, all these patriarchs, all of this stuff has to be destroyed. On purpose, it has to be destroyed to bring in their new globalist antichrist government. The queen obviously exiting when she's ready to exit, and now King Charles, like I pointed out in a previous video, who is going to be one of the faces of the Great Reset, is going to do his part in this. But speaking of King Charles, I thought I would point out, as they did this week-long ceremony of thing after thing, they had processions, and it was just, I mean, for anyone to actually sit through this, I feel for you if you had the time to sit through it. I mean, we're talking like hours on end. And you're just watching her like they're just walking down the road marching and apparently people watched it i was able to scroll through it and i saw something i thought everybody would find interesting and that of course is just the fact that there was a goat on hand oh that's right now i'm not talking about you know just a goat in the crowd <laughs> i'm talking about a goat that was prominently featured and why wouldn't they choose a goat and of course king charles had to go out of his way to meet the goat as the goat now this is uh let me let's get this in the scriptures because Jake was worshiping devils, right? But when you look up the word devils, I know it's in the book of Kings or somewhere. Let's see here. Yep, this is uh when Jake got into the, the heathen practices. Yep, Rehoboam. That wicked guy. That was Solomon's sons. Son, he, he went all the way off. It says, and this is what he did, okay? He took away the, the, the Levite priesthood and established a, a wicked priesthood. Verse Second Chronicles 11 and 15, and ordained him priest for the high places and for the devils and for the calves which he had made. Okay? NLT real quick. It says Jeroboam appointed his own priest to serve at pagan shrines where they worship the goat, okay, and calf idols he made. Okay. I was trying to see what that pit part meant. Yeah, the idols, he was making idols, but the calf, all right, with the two horns is always at the forefront of uh, a lot of wicked practices on the left-hand side. And when you look up this word devils, okay, Shai, Shayar, all right, Harry, he goat, buck, a sacrificial animal. Okay, so the, 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 we're, we're seeing those practices, those heathenistic practices, all right, here in this very ritual that's before you. And you got Jake crying. The queen. Nigga. <laughs> Goodness gracious, man. You niggas are retarded. What about Queen Latifah? <laughs> oh, man. Goat was a part of this ritual. 
King Charles III has made his way back to Wales on Friday for the first time since the death of his mother, Queen Elizabeth II. Before attending to business, the 73-year-old monarch met with a very important member of the Welsh Armed Forces, Shankin IV, the goat mascot for the Royal Welsh 3rd Battalion. So that's a coincidence, I'm sure. The goat. Now, did King Charles, was, was the goat there to do goat yoga? Is that what we're supposed to believe? Or they were just going to make some goat cheese? Or is it because all of these Satanists reveal themselves, everything is in plain sight, and we know what the goat stands for. One only has to look as far as to see the traditions of Satanism and the occult and Baphomet worship. I mean... And Baphomet is a dual gender god, as you can see him here. All right, and he has a, a tattoo that says, uh, I believe, Coagula. <laughs> Remember on that movie, Get Out, Behold the Coagula. But, you know, the uh, dual gendered spirit is heavy in this world right now. All right, the taking away of, uh, you know, sex as, as a form of like um, gender. That's heavy because that's ultimately high level rebellion against the most high. I mean, we see the Baphomet statue rolled out by the Satanic Temple. Oh, right, they're not Satanists, I forgot. They don't believe Satan exists. They just, you know, they like the goat with breasts and a penis. You know, the Rolling Stone, I mean, the goat on the album cover. The goat, the goat, the goat, right? This, of course, the Knights Templar worship the Baphomet. That goes back to the Friday the 13th. And the whole and why would they have two children? It's a Jake child and probably uh, uh, Northern Kingdom here. All right, and they're gonna, and they're all looking up to this wicked. Now on this one, he doesn't have the breast, but you can see here that medical symbol. Okay, but this is a dual gendered uh, deity, which that's the archangel over this beast system. <laughs> it's one of Satan's archangels. Okay, and the the energy is real. You feel it. You see it everywhere you look. Look at Dwayne Wade uh, in his situation, his son. Everywhere you look, it's an attack on gender. Stigma around Friday the 13th about what was done to the Knights Templar because they were caught to be... You know how we see all the celebrities with ghosts, we use the term goat now. They're trying to convince us to use the term goat as greatest of all time so that they can get away with wearing all this jewelry and shirts and stuff that have the bath medals. When they do their rituals, they do it. On these black and white Masonic checkerboard floors, we saw with the wedding, the royal wedding just recently, I covered that a few years ago, and now we see it with the funeral. And what's mostly interesting, as we've seen these Masons, they always, I mean, they're, the way they even conduct the funeral, you can tell it's a Masonic ritual. Now, the queen herself, obviously, well, women can be Freemasons, by the way, select few. There are Freemasonic orders. Four women, Eastern Star, which I've covered all the time, and then, of course, the recruiting ones, the Job's daughters and the Rainbow Girls for young girls. And most notably, the Queen's father, King George VI, was a notable Freemason, because the royals are all connected to this. Now, Freemasonry is, you know, it's the bottom of the barrel, but the core of Freemasonry, which all of these secret societies practice, to get to whatever elevation in, in uh, the occult that you get, which a lot ascend above 33, and then they go into different secret societies but it's they all practice the same thing and then they go on and graduate to other you know and learn different things and you know different secret societies different orders that they join but they all at the core have mainstream at the core so you see the black and white checkerboard floor and what's really interesting to note is this aerial shot which of course remember any of these things are done on purpose they love doing this stuff they set up seating we see this at you know, the Olympics, we see as the Super Bowl when they do the aerial shots, you'll always see like eyeballs. We saw at the 9-11 tribute, you know, right after that happened, the aerial shot with a giant eyeball. This is done on purpose. What do you see here? You see the Masonic checkerboard, you see at the bottom of it, her coffin. Is that not an upside down cross? Oh, is that a coincidence too? Of course it is to the zombies out there because they don't know how these people operate. They operate in plain sight. They tell you in plain sight because they can get away with this stuff. 
They could point at somebody like me and say, oh, come on now, we weren't thinking about, oh no, the, you know, just like the choreography and music videos and all these other things that we see, it's all strategically done. They know the common person will never look at these things as rituals. They will never look at these things and say, that's an upside down cross. But for those of us who have eyes to see and ears to hear, we know how they work. We see how they work because we see through the mind control. We're not operating on cruise control like the rest of society. They're communicating a message to one another. They're communicating a spell right in front of us, on us. And that is as obvious as it gets. So the queens, the entire thing was a huge, huge ritual. This is what they always do. I guarantee you, and she wasn't even in the casket. Most people don't even believe she's not alive. I mean, whatever you want to believe, you're allowed to believe. I can't prove that one way or the other. They didn't transfer their whole personality to a whole a little girl somewhere. They never die. They're immortal. Anyway, you can watch the rest of this. I mean, pretty much, um, he's just showing, you know, the rituals and the evil sim symbology because that's how they work, you know, that they had throughout this funeral, all right, which people are all in awe and being sidetracked. Meanwhile, they're going forth with the uh, NWO. Fourth Industrial Revolution. Smart cities are being set up. All right. And planning to get you on that grid. Isaiah 47 and 12. Stand now with thine enchantments and with the multitude of thy sorceries. Wherein thou hast labored from thy youth. Okay. This is what you've always been about. Since the garden. Okay. You, you, you've been a, a person of left hand capabilities. Witchcraft. Okay. And the gig is up. All right. It's no longer working. And it's, it's, it's able to we're able to see clear through the lies now. And the average person even sees through it, but they don't know how to link it. All right. Uh, scripturally and prophetically, it says, if thou if so, thou shall be able to profit. If though. All right. Thou shall be able to prevail. Thou art wearied in the multitude of thy counsels. Let now thy astrologers, the stargazers, the monthly prognosticators, the Chaldeans, stand up and save thee from these things which shall come upon thee. Okay. Behold, thou shalt be as stubble. So you're going to be destroyed, man. So hopefully our edify will be back with more.